Hey, welcome to the VHF UHF channel and um, in an effort to continue making videos because it's been a while I haven't actually posted a video and I want to uh, start posting regular videos on this channel. Um, we're going to talk about the amateur radio band plan for VHF and UHF because one of the first things that people stumble across when they scan with their new little scanner or uh, communications receiver of some sort is the amateur radio bands. They start hearing these guys talking about tech and all sorts of things and they're wondering what they are. They ID themselves with their call letters. Well, amateur radio operators are um, all across the VHF, UHF spectrum. Some bands are more popular than others, but um, I will tell you that um, most of the uh, popular band, if you, you are in an uh, area close to a big city, you'll hear pretty much a lot of traffic almost all the time. Uh, maybe weekdays and the daytime is a little more quiet, but um, it's, you know, usually you hear pretty much a lot of traffic. So the first band that we come across when we start scanning in the VHF band, uh, you might know that there's something called uh, VHF low on some old receivers and um, on scanners well there's the 30 to 50 megahertz or 54 megahertz band and the reason why it stops at 54 megahertz is because they include that little um, 6 meter amateur radio band now depending on what type of receiver you have you will not be able to hear all of the communications here the 6 meter band has a mix of Morse code uh, single sideband signals and of course FM repeaters so if you have a regular down-to-earth scanner that just has uh, FM or AM FM and FM wide then you will be uh, listening mostly to the upper part of the band where FM repeaters are and if you have a communications receiver like for example my ICOM ICR20 or my ICOM ICR8500 that I have here those are able to do single sideband on 6 meters. So 50 to 54, it's not the most popular band, uh, at least here in Canada. It doesn't seem to be very popular. But it's one of the bands that is amazing for one thing. It's the uh, propagation characteristics of this band. When you scan from 30 to 54 megahertz on your scanner, one of the features of that band in propagation is the fact that it's so close to shortwave that when there's some um, sporadic e-skip or when the slower activity is high, uh, the 30 to 50 megahertz band actually propagates via skywave via the ionosphere like a shortwave signal. So that's kind of amazing. And so uh, one of the things that you'll want to do is uh, check for signals that are long distance um, and actually a few um, weeks ago I had a great great weekend on Sunday there were lots of uh, single sideband signals from all across the United States it was really cool even heard um, the the uh, Azores which is uh, off or like in the middle of the Atlantic Atlantic Ocean between uh, Portugal and, uh, and North America it was really really cool so if you have a regular scanner, uh, scan from 50 to 54, you should hear, uh, there's, there's possibility that you'll hear FM signals. There's not a lot of activity here in, um, in Montreal. I don't hear a lot. The only thing I hear is when there's skip and I hear stations from across the United States and so on. Uh, but sometimes you'll hear FM signals. So try it out. Um, one of the great spots where you can learn where and how to listen and what sign signals you'll have is the ARRL website. Now one major problem about the ARRL is that the band plans that are on this website are American band plans. So in the United States uh, the frequency coverage of amateur radio bands is not necessarily the same as in Canada or Europe in some European countries or so on. But it gives you a general idea of the band plan that you'll have. So 6 meters, 50 to 54 megahertz. Even if you don't hear anything, I think it's worth to scan regularly. 
on 50 to 54. And um, it's surprising what you might hear. And so check out the band plant on the ARRL website, um, www.arrl.org slash band dash plan, as you see here on the top left. And you have the complete band plan from 50 megahertz up to 54 where you'll hear stations. So uh, even if you don't hear anything, this is one of those special band that is interesting and worth monitoring regularly. Every time you turn on your scanner, you should actually just give a little scan of that frequency band uh, to see if you hear anything. Now, this band being lower in frequency does require to have better reception um, a bigger antenna. So if you have that little rubber ducky antenna on your scanner, for example, that might be a little short antenna for six meters. Uh, doesn't mean you won't hear anything, but chances are lower. Um, a good telescoping whip, or um, like I have on my ICOM ICR20, which is a, uh, f a 30 to 1300 megahertz whip with a uh, little coil in the middle, uh, does help a lot in listening to six meters. So give it a try and, uh, you know, you'll never know what you can hear. So, uh, and if you have a communications receiver, uh, try the lower part from 50 to 50.300, um, I'd say, um, in upper sideband. I try that because uh, it's surprising what you can hear um, on the band. So I uh, hope this helps and uh, take a peek at other videos I'm putting on of all the amateur radio bands that I will talk about on VHF and UHF. So hope you enjoy these videos and uh, take a peek. We're going next to make a video on the most popular amateur radio band, which will be 2 meters. So thanks and 73s.